one of the most significant things to, to my thinking uh, uh, that indicates that this could not have been the sort of collapse that we are told it was is the presence of the dust clouds. Uh, and as you've seen in the pictures, and I'm sure all of us have, have uh, seen probably more than we would like, uh, there were very, very large clouds of very thick dust that enveloped the area that crossed the river that made it almost all the way to New Jersey from the pictures that I've seen. Uh, this type of flow is something that we are familiar with in physics. It occurs in only two situations that we know of naturally. Uh, one is in volcanic eruptions where a large amount of material is suddenly exploded into the air and basically forms small particles. Uh, the other situation is something called turbidity currents. These occur along the edges of the continental shelves where mud or sediment will slump, become suspended in water. And the, the common thread is that you have large amounts of a, a dense material that is suspended very quickly in a fluid, thereby creating another denser fluid, which is, in effect, the dust cloud. And that fluid can achieve considerable velocities. Uh, the problem with creating this sort of uh, slurry of fine particles is that there really is no mechanism that has been proposed. We have concrete floors with carpeting or flooring over them. We have furniture. We have floors basically that are coming together in a collapse, but the concrete is basically protected under these layers. Uh, early in the collapse, in the very first moments, we see these thick clouds being ejected at very high speed. They're clearly dense because they flow downward and become part of this large overall pyroclastic flow. Uh, what we're basically being told is that the concrete sort of jumped up into midair, exploded itself, and then was ejected as the floors came together. Not a very plausible mechanism, but I, I have yet to hear of, of anything else proposed to explain it. Uh, from quite a few people on the scene, we've been told that the powder uh, it represented most of the concrete, that the amount of intact macroscopic chunks of concrete on the scene were, were negligible, that basically everything was reduced to powder. And incidentally, we also know that other things besides concrete were reduced to powder. We know that contents of computers, exotic metals from computer chips, these sorts of things were, were also identified in the dust and in very small particles, uh, generally on the order of less than 100 microns in diameter. So we have a real issue of mechanism as far as what in the, in the process of this collapse could cause so many things to be pulverized so finely. For the, the towers to collapse the way we saw them collapse basically implies that the columns simply collapsed into themselves. They telescoped straight down. Uh, steel keeps a lot of its structural integrity, uh, even, even when heated, until you begin to approach the melting point, you, you don't really see a catastrophic loss of strength. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about basically vertical box columns collapsing into themselves, which implies a complete loss of mechanical strength. And as far as the initial impacts, this recent uh, NIST study made an interesting point about World Trade Centers uh, two. Uh, the film analysis showed that, that it oscillated for about four minutes after it was struck by the airplane, and the oscillation rate was identical to what would be expected for the intact tower. Trade Center towers and most modern buildings are heavily redundant in the sense that the load bearing can be shifted to other members if some of them fail, and we, we saw that happen in this case. Stresses do redistribute, but Absent further weakening of the structural members, that distribution is, is limited. It, it happens, the, the structure restabilizes, and unless there's significant further damage, it doesn't progress to a total collapse. World Trade One began collapsing from the very top after an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, it's very hard to imagine office contents progressively heating up high, hotter and hotter over that period of time. And for a building to collapse from the very top, which is the least heavily loaded, is also very odd, to say the least. Uh, just a couple of other anomalies. As we know, there were reports of explosions. There were reports of underground explosions in both of the towers at the time of the impact from a building engineer by the name of Philip Morelli. There are interviews with him on the web. Uh, 
from the Noday Brothers film, 9-11, we see that the lobby of the North Tower was extensively damaged with what looks like high explosive blast damage, and this was immediately after the plane collision. But uh, we know that on the weekend before, there were power downs, and there appear to have been evacuation drills going on throughout the, the previous week, uh, which suggests that uh, at least some people knew that, uh, that something was happening. The power downs may represent a time window in which demolition charges would have been planted, although I, I think it's possible that uh, they also were, were planted over a much longer period of time, uh, given the relative accessibility of the buildings. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you.